Hi, everybody, and welcome to our first class of CHY 114. Uh, certainly not the way that I would have preferred to do things, uh, but this is where we are. Uh, and so I, I had initially hoped to do this first, our, our first class as a live Zoom meeting. Uh, unfortunately, things within circumstances within my own life have prevented that. Uh, to be honest with you, our son, is, his, his daycare has had an outbreak and he has been a close contact. Things seem fine as of now, um, but he is still under quarantine until the middle of next week. And so I will be working from home during that time, uh, or I'll be working from home anyway, because we're remote as a university, um, but we'll be keeping him home with me during that time. And if you know anything about trying to navigate life with a 22 month old toddler, then, then you know that I, I will probably be able to work, but to try to time things such as a synchronous class will be all but impossible. And so our first class meeting is going to be asynchronous via this, the, the, these videos that I've sent out. And again, I do apologize for that. Uh, definitely not the way that I would have preferred to do things. Uh, I can only ask that you are, are understanding and patient, uh, just as I will be when unfortunately life probably does get in the way of, of, of your schedule and plans sometime through the semester. Um, so that being said, let's talk a little bit about CHY 114. I am Professor Staples and I'll be your instructor for the lab, for this lab class this semester. And so let's start just by going through a few of the basics of, of the class itself, the syllabus, things like that. This here is the website for the course. I sent you the link in the website, uh, the link to the website in the email that, that also had the link to this video in there. I would bookmark this site. Uh, this site is going to be our central hub for, for the semester. Uh, and it has several important features on it, things like the lab schedule you'll find on here. And so what we'll be doing throughout the semester, I do want you to take note, and I'll make sure to point this out as we go through the semester as well. We're trying a little bit, something a little bit different with, with our schedule and the order in which we do the labs this semester that I think might work out better for you. This does mean that we are doing module three, you can see here, before module two. And so just make sure that, that you are taking note of that and, and, and watching the schedule as the semester goes on and make sure that you're preparing for the correct experiment. So, and a, something else that you'll find on this page. So this, this website here is the overall website for all of CHY 114. You will also find individual instructor pages. If you click under mine, this is a page that you will go to quite often. Uh, there is a link to the syllabus here. The syllabus isn't any different from the general syllabus found here. I just have my, my own contact information in there. Google Classroom, where you'll turn, on, turn in all of your work. We'll talk about that more later. We'll talk about this for next time tab later. But then here's all of my contact information and my office hours for the semester. The other thing that you'll find on this page is we will always be reporting class data into an online website or an online uh, spreadsheet. And so for instance, if you're in the Monday at 930 section, you would click here. And we'll talk about this more when we actually get into lab and get doing some things, uh, but this is where you'll go to actually input all of your data. And then when you go to do your post lab later, you'll have all of the class data right here to work with. And so this is where you'll go to access all of that class data as you do your post lab analysis. You'll also find any emails that I send out are, um, are recorded here as well. And so any messages that I send out to the class, you'll also be able to find right here on this page under this announcements section. Spend a little bit of time just going through the syllabus, talking about the class a little bit. And so things that you will need for the course, you are going to need a set of uh, safety goggles or safety glasses. There are some, there, there are a couple different pair that are approved through eCampus, e through the campus online bookstore. Those definitely work. In all honesty, though, if you go online, Amazon, or go to any hardware store and just buy anything that's that are quote unquote approved safety glasses, you'll be fine. And those will, will qualify for what you need. You also definitely need the current version of our lab manual. It looks like this. Oh, and it's getting blurred. Let me change. I didn't realize it was going to with my blurred background that it would also blur things like 
the syllabus when I hold that up. So let's just change my background real quick. There we go. Okay. So here's a cop. Here's what your lab manual looks like. You will have to order this through eCampus as well. If you have not done so, do so pretty much immediately. You will absolutely need this manual when we are working in lab, or when, when you're when you're doing, in fact, all of your work from the very beginning. And so that lab is, that lab manual is an absolute must-have. And then other various things that, that you'll obviously need: calculator, pretty um, pretty obvious tool. We will be using a fair amount uh, or doing a fair amount of spreadsheet analysis in this class. And so Excel or Google Sheets, things like that. Excel is definitely preferred. Google Sheets works for most things, um, but Excel does just have some superior functionality to it. And so that is, is the preferred. Uh, but if you are familiar with Google Sheets, if you use a lot of Google Sheets, then that'll be fine for most of what we do as well. If you do, if you are interested in Excel, there is, you can get a free copy of Excel with your university credentials. In fact, I believe I have a link to that right on the website. Where do we, where did we put that? Yep, right here, Microsoft Office download site. So if you're right from the front page of the website, click that and it'll bring you to this page here. One thing to take note of is that that site gives you two different types of Excel to be able to use. One of those is a web browser based Excel. Do not use that one. That one does not have all the functions that you're going to need. Instead, you want to use that site to download Excel onto your computer. Then you'll be able to use absolutely everything that you need. And so that is a key difference. Make sure that you're using a downloaded version of Excel, not the web browser version. Uh, printers, actually not, not going to have to worry about printers for this semester. We'll talk more about this in a little bit, but all of your submissions for my course are going to be electronic through Google Classroom. And as I mentioned, you will be using the website for quite a bit. Course description and learning outcomes. We'll talk about a lot of that. We'll talk about the structure in a little bit as well. Grading's pretty self explanatory. We'll talk about all these sections, but you're going to have a weekly grade, which is based on your just sort of your weekly lab work, doing your pre labs, writing in your notebooks, doing your post lab analysis, writing a conclusion, and so forth. To determine your semester grade, 80% of that semester grade comes from that weekly lab work. Then you will also have a lab practical at the end of the semester where you're going to need to come in and do a couple of the things that we've done. And actually, hands on, I'm going to evaluate your lab skills. And then there will also be a final paper that you'll have to do. And we'll talk all, more about all of that as the semester goes on. Uh, but that is how your semester grade will be determined. Just looking over my notes of what else I want to talk about. We'll hit all of this weekly work in a little bit. There's your practical. Again, here's a copy of the schedule built into the syllabus as well. When we do get into the lab, finally, hopefully just in, a, in, in another week at the beginning of February, um, just some of the basic lab safety. You, we, you will have to sign a, a sheet basically saying you will agree to the safety rules. The main ones are, though, that you absolutely must be wearing your, your goggles or your safety glasses at all times. Once, any, once there is chemistry happening in the room, you've got to have your goggles on. Uh, most classes, most lab sessions will start with me talking about whatever I need to talk about for anywhere from a half hour to 45 minutes, typical length. You don't need your goggles on for that. But once anyone in the room starts actually working on the lab, goggles have to go on, they have to stay on the entire time that you're in there. Uh, even if you're done with, with you and your group are, are done, but there's another group still working in the lab, you got to keep your goggles on at all times. The other big one is just proper attire. Not usually an issue at the start of the semester, but towards the end, absolutely no open-toed shoes. You've got to wear regular closed-toed shoes, long pants, no shorts, etc. cetera. Uh, and this, I'm an absolute stickler on. You show up wearing shorts into my lab, I will kick you out and I will not let you stay. Uh, you don't have goggles, I will not let you stay for lab. You, you've got to have this um, these safety, um, you, you've got to be properly attired. 
in order in order to be safe. Um, no food or beverage whatsoever in the lab. There are little cubbies that you'll see when we get in there, and you can keep things in there. You'll keep your bag in there, and if you keep, you know, if you want to keep a bottle of water or something in there, that's absolutely fine. If you need to pop out for a few minutes uh, and pop out into the hallway and get a drink of water, eat a granola bar, whatever, that's absolutely fine. Um, you know, this this isn't high school. I'm not going to yell at you or ding you if you step out of the room or go to the bathroom, whatever you need to do. Um, and so that's just to say, if you, if you do need to grab a bite to eat, depending on what time you are in lab with me, absolutely step out into the hall. You, that, that's absolutely fine. Uh, just nothing in the lab itself. Attendance. So attendance in lab is absolutely required. I mean, you've, you've got to be in the lab and be doing things in order to really learn from the lab. And so are the technical rule for, um, for labs in general is if you miss more than two, you can't pass the course. And, and typically our rule is also, if you do miss, then you can get the data from another student and still, excuse me, still complete a lot of the work for up to 75% of your grade. All that being said, we're obviously in a unique situation this semester. If you, are if you test positive for COVID, if, if you're a contact, if you are just plain not feeling well, if you don't feel well, I don't want you coming to class. Um, and, and, and so, I mean, that's to protect your classmates, that's for, to protect myself. Like I said, I've, I've got a little a toddler at, at home, obviously unvaccinated, he's under five. And, and so if you don't feel well, I really don't want you to be in lab. And so a lot of these rules are, we're definitely playing a little bit loose with those this semester. So for the purposes of, of whatever, what, what's going on right now, I'm gonna consider you absent from lab if you just flat out miss it and you don't get in touch with me. That's gonna be considered an absence that you can't uh, make up from. If however, you, you email me, you know, the morning or the night before a lab and you say, hey, Professor Staples, really not feeling well today. I'm gonna to go try to get a test later on, but in the meantime, I'm not gonna to come to lab. Absolutely, that is completely understandable and I respect that. If that happens, we have provisions for that and I will be able to set you up so that you can still earn all the points. So the biggest thing is just communicating with me. Let me know what's going on and we'll be able to take care of you that way. Definitely read through the rest of this at some point. This is all uh, various university, syllabus language that we have. So take a look through the rest of that. Let's talk a little bit sort of about the, the, the weekly flow and, and things that you'll be graded on. So as we look through the weekly lab work, you've got pre-lab work, which is due at the beginning of every lab period. There are two facets to, to your pre-lab for most every lab. There are pre-lab exercises, which are various questions that um, that start to get at some of the topics and concepts that we are looking at in that lab. There's also a pre-lab notebook template where you will start to, to work up your notebook. <coughs> Excuse me. And so both of those are due before you come to lab. And like I said, we'll talk about Google Classroom where you're going to submit things, but I will absolutely be looking at Google Classroom before lab starts to be sure that everybody has everything submitted. If you don't, you can't stay for lab. You have to have this pre-lab work completed before lab starts. And so when we take start to take a look at some of that, for instance, now I'm just gonna take a peek real quick at, excuse me, at the module one pre-lab material, which will be due in a couple of weeks. But you have, for instance, pre-lab exercises on page 19. I'm gonna start to go through a lot of the I said the different concepts that we'll be talking about and, and doing in that lab. And then you have your pre-lab notebook template, which starts on page 21. And the pre-lab notebook template is where you're gonna write in things like the title of the experiment. What are we actually doing? What are the objectives? What are we, what are we looking to try to do? And what are some of the different materials and equipment we're going to use? And so really just sort of getting ready for the lab. The other big section in there is a procedure overview, 
where you're going to write out some bullet points of everything that we're going to be doing. This doesn't have to be completely descriptive. Some of it you won't really understand until we do get going. But this is where you would write in some things to the effect of calibrate the turbidity meter. <coughs> Excuse me, a little frog in my throat. Um, but you would write in things like calibrating the turbidity meter. Um, take triplicate measurements of turbidity of, of, of each sample, how you're going to want to analyze them and things like that. Really the goal here, and I'm not going to do this to you, but you should think about the goal here being that you should be able to take this page in the lab and nothing else and complete the experiment. And for those of you that are going on in chemistry, that's what you're definitely going to need to build to. Dr. Woodruff in his biochem classes, that's exactly what he does. He does not allow students to take in the, the lab procedures that he gives them. They're allowed to bring in their notebook where they have written things down and gotten themselves ready. That's all they're allowed to use. So like I said, I'm not gonna do that to you. You are first semester chemistry lab students. You're not uh, like third year biochemistry students like his are, but that's something that you're just keeping in the back of your head. That that's sort of the goal of, of that section. And so that's what you're going to do before lab. So those, are, those things are all done and completed before you ever come to lab. Then you're in lab. Now, now we're finally, we, you know, we're here. You're, you're, you're performing the lab. Then in your lab notebooks, you're going to be writing down everything that you actually do. And so again, that pre-lab notebook template, those are the bullet points of, this is the basic game plan for when you get into lab. But then when you're actually in lab, <clears throat> you write down the things that you do. Should be written in full sentences uh, and, just, and being very detailed about what you've actually done, as well as all your data. What are you actually finding for data? Record all of that. So that'll be your, that's your lab notebook. You'll find a good example of that in the intro to the lab manual. I can find it here. on Roman numeral page, Roman numeral basically nine through, nine through 11, you'll find a good examples of your lab notebook and what you should be writing in there. <laughs> and then after the lab, you've got your whole post-lab analysis. Every lab has a series of different questions sort of designed to guide you through the analysis. You'll have a lot of different spreadsheet analysis on every lab and some graphs with every lab. And so all of those things are part of the, the entire post lab for each module, as well as a typed conclusion for each module, three quarters of a page to a page or so, in which you discuss the purpose of the experiment. What were we trying to do? You discuss the experimental methods in very, very basic terms and the big results. And so that's what I really want you to focus on is talking about the science and the results and what it means for the Green River Project, which we'll talk about more in another video. And so those things, your, your notebook, your post lab and your conclusion are all due one week following the lab. And so for instance, when we look at our schedule here, so here's our lab schedule. So you'll see that for our first week, this week that we're doing here by video, the following week, what is due is all of everything from module zero, your notebook pages and your post lab, no conclusion for that one, but normally there will be. So you'll have your notebook and your post lab from the lab that we did the week before, and then your pre-lab from the lab, the experiment that we're doing that day. And so that will be the general flow every week. That is, that's what is due every week is your notebook, post lab, and conclusion from the experiment that we did the week before and your pre-lab work from the lab that we're doing that day. And so you'll always have this to go by. You'll also have uh, what I call a four next time sheet, which I'll talk about in, in a little bit that'll help you figure out exactly what is due. But that's the basics of that flow is every week you're going to turn in all of the notebook, post lab and conclusion from the lab we did the week before and your pre-lab work from the lab that we're doing that day. 
other things that you'll find on the web page that will, that will help you. You don't have this until I think module two, maybe, but you're going to have to fill out what we call um, or use the SDS sheets, safety data sheets, in order to fill out information about the chemicals and the materials that we're going to be using. So for instance, if you've got your lab manual in front of you, take a look at page 44, and you'll see in module two, where you're going to provide, where you're going to give out a list of chemicals for everything that we're going to be using in that lab. If you go to this page here on the website, go to the safety data sheets page, you'll see the data sheets for every chemical that we're going to use. This is where you can get that information. And so in module two, you're going to be where one of the things you'll be working with is ammonium nitrate. And here you can find all the different safety information associated with that. A signal word, which is something that you're going to need to write in, in your notebook, signal word for ammonium nitrate is warning. And any of the hazard statements. And so here's all the hazard statements that are associated with it. And those will have to be written in your manual. And any other miscellaneous info that you see from the sheet that you think is important. Um, but really the bottom line with, with that portion is you need to be familiar with the chemicals we're going to work with before you actually come to lab. And so you can find all that information right on the website. The other thing you can find on the website is some of this is um, are just some copies of things that are in the lab manual. We'll talk more about this module zero and the procedural videos in, in another video. But one thing that you can find as well is there are, there are several links throughout the lab manual. Those links you'll also find here. So if you're having trouble typing a link in that you find in the lab manual, just come to this page and we've got the link right there that you can go to. It makes things a little bit simpler and easier for you. I'm trying to think if there was anything else that I wanted to really talk about in this video, and I don't think there is, uh, but those are the basics for, for sort of how lab is going to run, what we're going to do when we finally do get a chance to get into lab and do some real work. Uh, and so if you have any questions, definitely feel free to to let me know. Uh, but once but once we do get into lab, this is basically how things are going. Oh, sorry, there is one more big thing. A couple more. So like I mentioned earlier, all of your work for this course for, for me, for Professor Staples, other instructors do things a little bit differently. But I ha have gone to all electronic submissions of your work. You have already received an invite to join the Google Classroom for this class. And so you should respond to that invite if you haven't already and actually join the class. But then, so you're going to be doing a lot of your work right in your notebooks, like all of your pre-lab questions, you've got all your notebooks here, your post-lab questions and so forth. Then you're going to have Excel sheets and graphs. Rather than rip all of this out and print out your spreadsheets and print out your graphs and all of that, I'm going to have you submit things electronically on Google Classroom. It's easy enough to do. You can see what it looks like here. This is a, a student view of it. And so for instance, module zero, you can see that there are two assignments up now for module zero, with the due dates shown. And so when you go to submit your notebook for module zero, it's easy enough, just go to module zero notebook, go to view assignment, and you can submit your work right over here. Add or create, and this is where you could then link in files, so whatever file you have, if you have it on Google Drive. I don't care when, when you look, for instance, at your notebook page here, I don't care how you get this into an electronic format. It really doesn't matter to me as long as I can read it. Scan it, if that works. Take a picture of it with your phone, if that works, that's fine. If you have a smartphone, which the majority of you do, then you can actually download the Google Classroom app, and that'll make it very easy, because from the app, you can click add or create, it gives you the image to take a picture of it. And then you can literally just take a picture of this and it'll upload it as, as part of that assignment. And so whatever works for you, play with that a little bit. That's sort of what the first week will be about is, is playing with how to do those submissions. Um, like I said, it doesn't matter to me how you get that in there electronically, uh, but you will just need to find a way to get all of your work into electronic files and upload it onto Google Classroom. It's really not that big of a pain as it sounds like. Um, in fact, I, I have found that it's easier than sifting through everything and putting together a paper packet and, and handing that in. This is actually does streamline it quite a bit. And so everything will be turned in there via Google Classroom. As far as your Excel work, when you are turning in your spreadsheets and your graphs, 
I do not want you to actually give me the Excel file itself. Instead, take a screenshot. If you don't know how to take a screenshot, literally just Google how to do it. If for a lot of you, it'll depend on what type of system you have. But for instance, I've got a Mac here in front of me. And so you can see if I simply say screenshot, there we go, screenshot on Mac. Tells me how to do it. And so if I was to take a, if I want to take a screenshot of this, and there are a couple of different ways if you read through this, but I would simply go control shift four. Boom. And there I've got my screenshot and you can't see it from where you are, but now I've got an image file or it went on a different screen of mine, but now I've got my image file that I can save and then upload it. And so that is definitely what I prefer for all of your Excel submissions. Uh, it just makes things a lot easier for, for how it ends up being viewed on my end. And so screenshot everything with Excel, do not actually give me the Excel file. Um, but yeah, so everything will be turned in via Google Classroom. The other thing to just take note of, and so you'll see, uh, again, you can see the schedule for, our, for when we're gonna be doing anything and we're, when we're doing all the labs and what is actually due. You'll see that on the schedule. The other thing that you'll find helpful, I hope anyway, is if you go onto my instructor page here and click this for next time tab, you'll see that I give you, or I show you for instance, and this was for, I'm gonna change the date here. This was for last semester, um, but all work needs to be turned in by Google Classroom, blah, blah, blah. I tell you exactly what needs to be turned in. So for the first week and so, for us, this will be the week of, oh, when will it be? We, we've got, thirty first, and so that will be the week of the 7th, week of February 7th is, is when this stuff will be due. Yeah, so the week of February 7th. And so this tells you exactly what is due and what pages you can find it on. And for the most part, this one, this first lab is pretty self-explanatory. So there's not a lot of extra information here, but this is where I'll also give you some extra tips and things like make sure to include this with your graph. And this is what I wanna see for your conclusion and yada, yada, yada. Um, and so this for next time tab will really clue you in as to exactly what you need to be doing every week and what you need to be turning in. And so that now is, is it for what I want to talk about as far as the course intro. I will have another video that talks more about the, the Green River project that we'll be doing this semester, as well as what you'll be doing for the first week. And so thanks for watching.